Welcome to Popcast Deluxe, your Y'all Ain't Gotta Dig My Grave of Weekly Cultural Review. I am John Caramonica, a critic of the New York Times. I'm Joe Coscarelli. I'm a reporter at the New York Times. It is mailbag week. Now, I know you're thinking, is this the late summer group show of YouTube podcast episodes? Is that the answer <laughs> is yes. <laughs> <laughs> I'm simply saying it's 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 it almost is, Labor Day. It is almost like by the time this comes out, will it be? Just before Labor Day, <laughs> yeah. days before Labor Day, yeah. um, on regular podcast, we have routine mailbag episodes, listener mailbags. This is the first podcast deluxe viewer mailbag. You're viewing us. Here's the mailbag. There are your questions. Uh, we're going to do these semi-regularly. And uh, as always, we want to hear from you and hear what's on and in your minds. Yes, please. We have questions this week about some of your faves and some of your non-faves at least some of my non-faves uh we got selena we got doja we got bts we got renee rap we got a lot. earl sweatshirt earl sweatshirt nothing goes together with renee rap like <laughs> earl, earl sweatshirt. sweatshirt uh we appreciate everybody who brought questions to the facebook group to the discord uh to podcast and uh also the t- last few t-shirts have been flying which is that's great. The cabinet above my refrigerator. Thank you. Uh, it's the popcast.myshopify.com for the final ones. Uh, Proceeds go to charity. All profits. Uh, the New York Times Neediest Cases Fund, which is uh, a longstanding charity that the Times has hosted that donates millions and millions of dollars, uh, including the humble proceeds from the podcast T-shirts and stickers. So by all means, tap in, grab the last few. We'll do another drop. It doesn't have a camera reference because that is confusing. Went, went over a lot. Literally of confusing sets. to a lot of people. Yeah. It bummed me out, but you know, that's what I'm here for. I'm, yeah. this, I did it. I did. I did it for me a little yeah. bit. I did it for us. Uh, we're gonna jump in. The first question. It's for us, but it's really for you. Okay. Yeah. It's from Lauren Margolis. Hi, Popcast. Something has been haunting me. I think about it at least once a day. Uh, I th- Strong start. There are things that fall into this category for me that are not fit for Popcast Deluxe. Um, on a recent episode of Popcast Deluxe, when discussing whether the Rema Selena collab is a contender for Song of the Summer, you said something to the effect, and by you, this it's means me. you. Yeah. It was a smart choice to have Selena on the track because she is probably the biggest pop star and just left it at that. Please say more. All caps, biggest pop star ellipsis ever, (laughs) question mark, of the 2010s, question mark, among women born between 1988 and 1995, question mark. Is that fact checked? She was born between those years? I'm just going to assume it is. Let me add that I love Selena Gomez's music. I've gone through phases of watching the Bad Liar music video on repeat. Classic video. Guess I'm a bad liar. Let me also add I am no music expert who can relate. Uh, uh, I'm too scared to get ripped apart in the Facebook group or Discord. Okay, Lauren, first of all, get in the Facebook group, get in the Discord, tinyurl.com slash podcast Facebook slash podcast Discord. Uh, no one's going to rip you apart. People do have strong opinions, but no one's going to rip you apart. All friendly. Yeah, it's like, it's generally, even when it's confrontational, it's, it's friendly. Like good yeah. vibes confrontational. So go It's ahead. confrontational towards... It, speak These for guys. yourself. I'm, I don't. I, I'm nothing about that. I rebuke that as well. Uh, anyway, Google is not serving me any answers. I hope your work is so popular that you are supported in perpetuity. We also hope that, uh, but not so hot that you don't have time to address this. Joe Coscarelli, Selena Gomez, the biggest pop star. Explain was, yourself. It was a little bit tongue in cheek. I've known you long enough and well enough and deep enough to know that you saying that it was a little bit tongue in cheek right now is some after the fact rationalization. Really? Okay. I think you believe Selena this. Gomez to be the biggest. Pop I star. think you like in your heart, you think this is true. So numbers don't lie. <laughs> See? Okay. <laughs> Tell me. Selena Gomez, the most followed person on Instagram who is not a professional soccer player. Uh, is that I could drive to fact yeah. check? No, that? no, it's true. Okay, good. Uh, I think she's the third most followed person, by far the most followed woman, and the most followed singer okay. on Instagram for many years okay. running. Selena is almost so big that we forget to mention her. Yes, but okay. 
how did she get <laughs> that big? Because when you say things like this, yeah. I say Joe has a idiosyncratic path yeah. through pop music, yeah. micro and macro history. <laughs> yeah. I allow for it. I forgive yeah. it. Yeah. Uh, but you're 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 coming with facts. Yeah. You're coming with data. Um, How did it arrive that way, though? She has been famous for so long. That's true. She's been so famous to Disney so many era. people. Yeah. Disney, her Disney era, Waverly Place, mm -hmm. Wizards of Waverly Place. Her 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 show. She was on Barney. Uh, as a yes. toddler we don't have to go through the whole bio i d actually did i did an episode of pop pantheon about selena gomez oh right and shout that's actually louis. yeah shout out to louis go go listen to that if you want to hear my two-hour dive or whatever into selena gomez's career um obviously dated justin bieber a huge part of her narrative she's always like a little Google bit old selena gomez justin bieber subway sandwich okay yeah okay Deep cut. Yeah, 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 deep cut. Yeah. Um, the the Call Me Maybe video, another great moment in mm -hmm. Selena Gomez. Gomez. Yeah, yeah. Uh, she's always on the periphery of the biggest thing at the moment, but she's been that for so long that she is the it's biggest additive. thing. Yeah, it's it's like Kim Kardashian being Paris Hilton's personal shopper. <laughs> Selena Gomez. Okay, but like, is there a signature Selena Gomez hit? that is not derivative or kind of like in the orbit of a bigger, more meaningful hit. No, but okay. that <laughs> might be the most sustainable place to be. To always be catching the draft yes. of the fastest car. Yes. Look, another sports show. Really we're, good. Yeah, uh, oh, you yeah, we're talking about we're talking about wind flow now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <Absolutely. laughs> like this. Like, <laughs> We're talking about slipstreams. Yeah, you get yeah. right in right yeah. behind there. Selena Gomez is in the pop culture slipstream and always has been. I mean, like, probably the uber all-star uber musician. You know what I mean? Like, you might hear Selena and Kygo. You might hear Taki Taki. You might hear uh, Rema, Calm Down. It's so funny because none of those songs feel like Selena Gomez right. songs. Which is fine. She's present on them. Yeah. But like Taki Taki does totally fine yep. without her. Yep. The Rema song has a total life yep. that doesn't include her. Why do people seek her out? I, this is the this is the question, and I think people seek her out for her vulnerability. I think she has this tragic figure, uh, sort of iconography in popular culture, always being the thwarted best friend, always being the thwarted girlfriend. Uh, having her health struggles. You know, she put out this uh, documentary recently, which really shows her, you know, being uh, at at bottom mm -hmm. in a lot of ways. Yeah. Um, and I think people are very invested in whether or not she can sustain all that we've thrown at her as a culture. Uh, and yet she keeps popping up in these new places. Selena plus chef. See if it needs more salt. All right, this is pretty damn good. Uh, oh, Loki yeah. banger. Uh, you you recommended it to me before, series. have not seen it. I really think that you would like it. Okay. A, a pandemic gonna, standout. Yeah, we're gonna um, get uh, again, ups uh, ups and downs, like yeah. rapid ups and downs for Selena Gomez. Um, and I just think, yeah, I just think people are are people, especially of a certain age, even a little younger than I am, uh, are really attached to to her arc. But and you think that the thing that they are attached to is the public facing, non creative part of her career, yep. which say tabloid arc, public wellness, mental health, et yep. cetera. Yep. And that the art, music, TV, film, whatever, amplifies or refracts the other thing? Yeah. Yes. Well put. Thank you. <laughs> I appreciate that. Uh, she put, just put out a new song. Single Soon. Single Soon, which is a funny. It's great. I, it's, it's funny. When she was promoting Single Soon, you know, I'll have is, a single yes, soon. Yes, it is. Um, should we play Single Soon? Yeah. Yeah. Let's play a little bit of single soon. Benny Blanco, Cashmere Cat. When I break the news, but I'll be single soon. I'll be single soon. I'm gonna take who I want. Stay out late if I wanna. I'm gonna do what I wanna do. I'm picking out this dress, trying on these shoes. Cause I'll be single soon. I'll be single Pop song. And dot, dot, dot. Taylor Swift? What do you mean? Okay. 
this is she struggles to get out from beneath shadows of her peers. And there in part were because least... of men like you. <laughs> oh my God. I think you mean men like Benny Blanca. Like I didn't make these choices. I just pointed to them. This is like I feel like a little bit bad, like on the first Olivia album, where people were just like, uh, this that sounds thing. like yeah, yeah, this thing, and then all of a sudden yeah. I, I don't want Selena Gomez to have to like pay Taylor Swift <laughs> for the rights to certain phrasing. So I hope I we're past that. I for in their relationship. I hope so. <laughs> But there are at least two distinct phrasings on this song that are like direct Taylorisms, like the kind of um, like the stuttering of the vowel rollout in one and then the kind of like harmonizing. There's at least two distinct things that feel pure Taylor. And the thing about Selena as a vocalist is I don't think she's as powerful. Like when you rap a car, you're rapping yourself around a Taylor Swiftism. Sure. Maybe that's the best thing possible. Maybe it's not that different than sampling a big hit from the 80s, except what you're doing is you're sampling a kind of vocal tick of like an extremely famous person. Or Taylor picked up these ticks from her friend Selena, whose music she loves. <laughs> no, I'm saying like the Selena hits are almost like Wake me up when you're done. Wake me up when the you're done. The Selena hits are like beside the point almost because she's given so much to the world of pop culture extra musically. And yet she has like 10 or 12 like amazing pop I'm gonna songs. I'm going to make you talk about this for 30 more <laughs> minutes until you have painted yourself so crazily into a corner that you cannot get out of. Uh, here's what the last thing I want to say about this question which is I got I got all day, dog. I got all day. Like, what are you talking about? I got Selena literally Gomez, all day. Selena Gomez is too big to fail, and also uh, Laura Margolis, who asked this question. If you are in fact the Laura Margolis who I used to hang out with in two thousand and six, but haven't seen in more than a decade, wow. Email me. I'd love to reconnect. I have a feeling that it's you, but I'm not positive. I mean, there's no indication of this person knowing your person. I know, but it's a. It, I it, think it's, it's an old high school friend. I okay. Think. Well, Lauren, you heard it here first. Yeah. Let uh, me know. Yeah. I, my phone number is the same. That's a crazy, th- crazy thing to say it's to true. anyone who's ever had your phone number it's on true. this show. Anyone on who's YouTube. ever had my phone number, hit me. Anyone who's ever had my phone number, <laughs> do not hit me. <laughs> Literally don't hit me. All right, John, I got a question for you. This one, as much as the Selena question was for me, this one is for you. This is from Haley Glover. You've mentioned offhandedly in a previous episode that Recent BTS songs are not as good as the previous songs, and I was hoping you'd dive into that a bit more. I'm a big fan of BTS and have been for years, and I typically enjoy their new songs and solo stuff, but I found that the songs I go back to time after time are always the older stuff. Some of the recent songs, it's so obvious to me why they don't stick around, but there have been some solo stuff that I feel like has similar elements to previous BTS, but doesn't always have the same hold on me. Would love to hear your thoughts on this. Thanks. Thank you, Haley. Is old BTS better than new BTS? Yes. Okay. (sighs) He said with a deep sigh. Yeah. Knowing what could be on the other end of that. Yeah. Um, we like honesty. We value honesty. Yeah, let me answer that question with a question. What does it mean to be army? <laughs> it's right? a good question. It's yeah. a good question. One thing that I've learned in my many years of reviewing K-pop records the way that I review other records. Yeah is you get two categories of response. You get people who are just uh, absolute stands who do not, cannot brook dissent of any kind. Yeah. But then you have people who are actually quite excited to have BTS records or Big Bang records or whatever taken as seriously as mainstream American pop records by mainstream and American pop And not just like, this critics. is K-pop. It's huge. We right. don't really get it, but it's right. awesome. Or... I, I, it's not worth our time, yeah. right? Like, I mean, I've been covering this in some form or another for 10 years. Yeah. To me, what happened with BTS probably, let's say it's right before the pandemic or right in early pandemic, 2020. There's a moment when BTS becomes popular enough in America that it starts thinking about making songs, to my ear, through the lens of what would an American pop group do. Does this start with Butter? It's in that, yeah, it's around that time. And I think, to me, that's when things start to go wrong. The value of BTS prior to that was that it was being accepted to the degree it was being accepted globally. It was being accepted on terms that are obviously informed by American pop, American R&B, American hip-hop. But 
jumbled together in a, a very particular and special way that was unique to that group at that time. The minute you start making songs that anticipate your audience or anticipate your scene, something of the essential core of it disappears. And I think when BTS started making songs that were like, what would an American pop song sound like? Let's make that and then assume it's going to retroactively work in our world. That to me felt like a mistake. You know, this most recent hit um, was seven set with Lotto and yeah. uh, Jungkook yeah. and Lotto. Yeah. Sure, that sounds like what an American pop hit sounds like right now. But to me, the value of whether it's K-pop stars, Afrobeats stars, Corridos Tumbado stars, having success on like an all genre chart, doing it in a way that's true to the original sound is to me, that's the ultimate victory. That's the ultimate saying we have so much support so much fan support, and frankly, so much musical talent that we don't have to have any concession. And the idea of crossover is obviously like a very 80s, 90s, 2000s idea, but I do think, at least in K-pop, there has been this sense of like, if a group gets big enough, we'll start making records that sound like the American records as an entry point. And to me, that's where the creativity disappears. And that's why the later stuff, to my ear, has not been as successful. Because it's too knowing of the space that it's entering. And it's also because it's knowing it's cautious. There's not any eccentricity in those records. They're very, very um, uh, color by numbers, you know? Is it possible to make the kind of music you're talking about from early BTS, but singing in English? Because you, what you're talking about also corresponds yes. with singing much more in because English, Because there's right? genuine overtures to like the potential uh, huge American audience. Could they I make think, songs in I, English I, that are as good as the old songs? I am not a producer of K-pop songs, yeah. but I think possibly, or at minimum, I mean, you listen to New Jeans records that sort of effortlessly go back and forth between languages and still feel like a little bit idiosyncratic, very particular to that group. Because they're mining subgenre instead of pop. Yes, big, but big, 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 pop. big 10 pop. Yeah. Um, but they're because they're doing that, and they're doing that with clearly a very talented producer or set of writers yeah. or am set of writers, they are making big P pop. They're just not making it. They're not setting out to, em to emulate a right. thing that already exists. What's next? Uh, <laughs> do you pull this off the discord? I think, or, or the Facebook group there. So it's, there's no name attached to it. So I, I, I apologize to this, whoever this is. We Subject, see you though. We do see you. Subject. Renee rap. Yeah. <laughs> Question. Do you like Renee Rap? <laughs> Joe, who is Renee Rap? Renee Rap is to me yes. a star of Sex Lives of College Girls, Max TV series created by Mindy Kaling about girls in college. Yes. Nerds in college. Mm -hmm. uh, com co a comedy nerd in college based mm -hmm. after herself. Fun little show. Pretty, pretty good. Only watched one episode. Stars so also stars um Timothy Chalamet's sister. Oh, what's what's her name? Great question. <laughs> Sisterly Chalam Chalamet. Sisterly Chalamet. Okay, shout out yeah. Sisterly Chalamet. Uh, uh, I want to say her name is Kimberly, but that could be it's on the show. Sisterly. That could be that could be her name okay. on the show. Um, so she's to you. Though. She's very funny. She's in the sort of um, Molly Shannon. Oh, mold. Good mold. Yeah. 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 Great. Yeah. Mold. Um, Renee Rapp plays like the mean girl in that okay. show, uh, who uh, is also in the process of coming out. She also plays Regina George in Mean Girls of the Musical. Yeah, uh, which I think both of these are are crucial to to the arc the arc of her her public persona. But now she is saying what she really wanted to do all along was make pop music. Okay, but before we get to that. Who is Renee Rapp to me? <laughs> Who is Renee Rapp to you? This is great. Renee Rapp to me, okay, so I would say I'm going to mess up the timing a little bit. Let's call it like three to six months ago. Okay. Renee Rapp was extremely active on TikTok. Yep. 
Because she was getting ready to put out her debut album. That's fine. Yeah. But she was active on TikTok in a way that, frankly, reminded me a little of Troy Sivan. Okay. Uh, uh, in what way? Shall we say coming into herself on Maine? Feeling herself? Enjoying the attention on Maine? Yeah. Uh, something about TikTok and and uh, that particular age of famous person of sort of like- Early 20s. Yeah. And like, so I hear. Yeah. Uh, but getting like a tiny bit, like a little bit of like positive attention and mm -hmm. sort of, and then you can stitch it, you can do edit, you can kind of be playful with it. You know, it's not how the stars of five to 10 years ago were doing it. You yeah. know, you think of like- how did a famous person interact with internet attention five, 10 years ago? If it's Drake, it's memes or feeding into the meme ecosystem here, it's literally just duetting it and stitching it. I thought Renee Rapp was very, very, very good at that for like an intensely concentrated period of time. Yeah. And there was like a stretch on TikTok for weeks where I was getting Renee Rapp content every day, either from Renee Rapp or about Renee Rapp. I was only casually, glancingly aware of Renee Rapp prior to that, but for those four weeks, it felt like she was the only famous person in America. To your point, Renee Rapp, new music. Snow Angels? That's what the album's called? Don't love that name, but. Produced entirely by Alexander23? I will say, so I listened to this album. My immediate take on the record Every song felt stitched so tightly, packaged so seamlessly. I did not know who produced it. When, when you told me it was Alexander, it made tremendous sense that it was Alexander in 23. Um, these don't feel like lived in songs so much as pre-existing, prefabricating mass machine art packages in which Renee Rapp has written lyrics. She's executing. Yes. And I don't even dislike it. I enjoyed a lot of this record, but the unruliness of her public figure yeah. up against this incredibly seamlessly gleaming, polished thing, to me, I don't know if it's like peak Renee rap. Like we are living in a, in a time where performers of all strike, but certainly young women are making crazy punk music or Karen Gans, Olivia Rodrigo rock music or whatever. There's all these different options available. This seemed like, I don't want to say a concession, but it seemed like potentially an old fashioned idea of what a young female pop star should sound like. Selena. Uh, do you, and to me, that felt like a tiny bit of a step back from the kind of full enthusiasm sure. of Renee Rapp on TikTok. Well, she's putting this album out for Interscope. A major, major label. People on Interscope make different sounding records. I mean, not to be like pro Interscope. No. But like, but, it's not impossible. No, but fine. But I think that she is trying to make a pivot. She basically is having herself essentially written off of the successful TV show she's on to, to, do, this. to do this, right? And like... That's a that's a choice when you've succeeded as an actress. Mm -hmm. I think she doesn't want to go too far as an actress because she thinks it won't result in her being taken seriously as a musician. I think, you know, probably felt like she had to step up and and play ball with this. I think there's some good stuff on here. It's getting she has a good voice. Yeah, she's a, she, it's, it's a she's a musical bit, theater performer. I was gonna say it's a little bit musical theater, yeah. a little bit cabaret. Yeah. Um there's some Billie Eilish piano ballad moments. It feels like the reason that there is so much sturdiness in the production is to, in essence, buffer against the big musical theater energy of the voice. Right. And then there's like lyrics, which she, you know, are getting some traction on Twitter mm -hmm. from pop stands, sort of laughing at it, but also embracing it. Mm -hmm. She has a few lines that catch you by surprise. There's a song, um, Tummy Hurts, uh, that that's sticking out that she plays, you know, she does clips of on TikTok a lot. We should listen to a Let's second of that. Yeah. I just want some recognition for having good sits and a big heart. I can't believe I let you hit it in hindsight. That might be the worst part. Oh, I taught you everything you know. Mm -hmm. But oh, I guess boys, they come and they go. But then there is the more, you know, uh, in your face stuff. I prefer the louder 
faster stuff on here to the ballads. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think they're a little less theatery. I think mm-hmm. the the opening song, Talk Too Much, is mm-hmm. strong. Mm-hmm. I like the hook. Uh, and this one and and this is where it feels like she's trying to it's I think yeah it's the opening track she's trying to say like here's my personality like I'm I'm too much and that's the story I'm gonna tell on but, this album. which is literally just counter narrative right. to the production which just at every turn is just like let me just grab you or just pull yeah. you over here yeah. just tighten you up just, ah. yeah and again it's a first album There'll probably be a second and a third, and there'll be opportunities to go in other directions. But I think if you had asked me before I listened to this record what this might sound like, I I would have almost said like, let's go more Regina Spectory, like oh, let's go like okay. a tiny bit more raggedy, like let's just dispense with the kind of like the thickness and the artifice, and just kind of like start cooking. With the rawness of the voice and the rawness of the lyrics. Leave Susanna Sun to make the album she wants to make. Wow. Nobody else can take that Regina Spectre lane until still. we get the debut album from another young actress. Still, still haven't watched the finale of The Idol. <laughs> I thought, I really, I truly thought about it this uh, on Friday. I had like a couple hours on Friday and I was like. Maybe I'll watch the finale of The Idol. <laughs> in, <laughs> That's in, a dark In thought. August 2023. <laughs> I truly, I truly had that thought. I really did. I'm going to do it. It actually ends with it's, Susanna Sun making a Regina Spencer album, album and becoming extremely and successful. Service, and, and servicing Radio it to, City Musical. Is she servicing it to Popcast Deluxe? <laughs> like personally servicing it to Popcast Deluxe? Yeah. Oh, man. Yeah. I really, I'm going to do it. All right. Gonna, we'll, we'll come back to yeah, it. Yeah, that's another episode. We'll do a rewatch uh, 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 of The Idol <laughs> Season 1 uh, uh, at the one year anniversary. No problem. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, <laughs> In the meantime, <laughs> <laughs> someone who would have been great on this next question, someone who would have been great on the idol. It's true. This if there's is, an idol season two, there probably won't be an idol season two. But if there's an idol season two, this person who you're yeah. about to read a question about would make a great guest yeah. appearance. Um, this is from Josh Tardy, spelled with a V. I assume it's Tardy. Uh, I think that's like an early ASAP mob reference. Or it's like Witch Housey? Yeah, it's Witch Housey. Uh, I think it's time for another Doja Cat episode. I feel like she's standing at an interesting, unique crossroads. She, quote unquote, attacked her fans, hemorrhaging thousands of followers on Instagram. She was somewhat canceled. First of all, imagine feeling attacked by Doja Cat and unfollowing oh, Doja yeah, Cat I'm, when the whole reason you follow Doja Cat is because to be there's attacked a chance by her. she might be attacked. Like, yeah, yeah. yeah, sorry. You, y'all are missing the point. She was somewhat canceled for supporting her boyfriend, a man accused of emotional manipulation. <laughs> I don't know anything about <laughs> or that. Or something like that. T- TBQH. Something serious. Yeah, we're not going to touch that. Okay, Allegedly. I I don't even know who she's dating. Um, many people were predicting a quick slide from relevance, but with the release of Paint the Town Red, PTTR, is that what the fans are calling it? I, I apparently so. Yeah. Paint the Town Red. News the opposite has happened. Just yesterday, it broke Spotify record for most streams in a day by a solo female rap artist. Not a real record. Um, that was my commentary. It's projected to vault <laughs> into the top five of the Hot 100. It's going bananas yeah. on TikTok, like all her songs. Big TikTok record. Personally, I think it's a boppy earworm. I appreciate a pop star with edges. I wonder how she keeps escaping cancellation, why her music continues to outclass her peers, at least by streaming metrics. So first of all, huge TikTok record. Yeah. Faith Town Red. Real big. I mean, um, Doja Cat is... She's killing breaking all the like, rules. Yeah, breaking she's, all of the rules. Everything we talk about is like a rule here. Yeah. Breaking all the rules. And everything she does just becomes what Doja Cat does. Like she's she's creating a lane for herself that has no boundaries. Genuinely the most purely talented contemporary female pop star. Except Selena Gomez. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Not cont- <laughs> oh, she's not contemporary. She's basically Madonna at this point. <laughs> Continue. How dare you? Doja Cat. How dare you? Uh purely talented. Yeah. Um very, very gifted singer. Yeah. Gifted mimic of styles when it's called for. Yep. Uh, very gifted rapper in an era in which singing and rapping, you know, are in constant uh, dance with each other. Yeah. Someone like Doja Cat, who's like very, very, very talented on both sides and knows how to slip between the two. 
Nobody else who's currently working really does it at that level except Drake. Um, but to me, she's the most purely gifted person working in a pop idiom right now. And so a lot of these things like, oh, I've hemorrhaged fans. I've like, no, like this is like Doja Cat fandom. What are the, what's the stand group? Don't know. It beats me. Okay. Doja Cat fandom to me. But, but that means something also. That yeah. We can't, that, that we, we can't don't know off the top of our heads. Um, is embracing all of this. And maybe Except that's the not, ones who were unfollowing. But but to me, those are not actual Doja Cat fans at the highest level. Like you have to appreciate someone who is willing to just like get on like IG Live and just like talk through her feelings. You have to appreciate someone who's like, hey, you know what? I'm shaving my head today. Like I wanna she's Sinead O'Connor. Like, I mean, like she is an expert button pusher. As good as she is at pop music, mm -hmm. she is as good at at uh extracurricular mayhem. Yeah. But Doja she, Cat come on podcast a lot. Yeah, anytime. Like, dead but she always keeps it both separate from her music and like just at the edge of like people are worried or freaked out for her. Like you have these little you have like eight out of ten Doja Cat blow ups every two weeks. Yeah. And then it like fades back to a normal level. You know, it's like she's constantly spiking in like the tabloid headlines, but it's also never really connected to the music, except like she teases people. Like this whole video, we should watch a little bit of Paint the Town Red, yeah. but it's all satanic imagery. And she's basically like, Oh, you think I'm like lost to the dark side? Like, here I am hanging out with Satan. Like Lil Nas X. I was gonna say it's very Lil Nas X, yeah, yeah. except the songs consistently deliver. I'm going to glow up one more time. Trust me, I have magical foresight. You gon' see me sleeping in courtside. You gon' see me eating ten more times. Ugh, you can't take that bitch nowhere. Ugh, I look better with no hair. Ugh, ain't no sign I can't smoke hair. Ugh, yeah. give me the chance and I'll yeah. Don't you think also that of all mainstream pop stars? the one who is most concerned with slash preoccupied with the condition of stardom is Doja Cat. The one who is most likely to say, hey, this thing, this pedestal, it's actually bull. Yes. Yeah. This pedestal is absolute nonsense. Yeah. And the way that I'm going to tell you that is like, on the one hand, I may just say that. Q, Fiona, Apple, this world is bullshit. Um, everybody out there that's watching, everybody that's watching this world, this world is bullshit. And you shouldn't model your life. Wait a second. You shouldn't model your life about what you think that we think is cool and what we're wearing and what we're saying and everything. Go with yourself. MTV VMAs Club. She's going to say it, but she's also going to behave in ways that destabilize yeah. the ordinary narrative between a fan and a pop star. And you have showing to be, off her bad skin, for instance. Right, you have to be willing to pivot, and like you know, not to be all like Madonna or whatever. But I think I may be a little bit wistful for an era in pop music where pop stars did not have to be uncomplicated. Complication was in many ways central to the narrative of pop stars of an earlier era, and I think that's been rinsed away in the era of Stan armies and. You know, we have complicated conversations about Taylor, for example, but that is not the predominant discourse around Taylor. Um, Doja feels like a form of celebrity that feels very familiar to me generationally uh, and frankly is a lot more exciting and fun to play with and fun to observe than this kind of like uncritical approbation that a lot of other stars uh, are seeking, not just are receiving, but are seeking. She's also really good at playing outsider insider mm. uh where like you know she came up through dr luke, luke the luke system right yeah. like her her biggest hits up to this point are with, with dr luke through his controversial period while the kesha suit was getting sorted out uh you know she's this song paint the town red is with earl on the beat who's like lil yachty's old yeah. producer mm -hmm. Um, which is cool to see them working together. Um, and yet, also, she has great taste. She has great taste. Legitimately great taste. But she's always also talking up this album as like, oh, I'm not giving you that BS uh, that I did last time. Like, I, I played by the rules and whatever. And then she's still delivering like high quality pop songs. CC Kelly Clarkson. Oh, okay. Sure. Uh, I, you know, I'm not that late period Kelly Clarkson lives up to early period Kelly Clarkson, but the notion of like, 
I did this thing because I was sort of like cornered into it yeah. in the Luke ecosystem, yeah. right? And yeah. now I'm going to do a different thing. And there are other other skills on display. But I think it's funny that she's able to present herself as this like weirdo rebel, but like everything's still pretty down the middle. I mean, there was that the song before this attention was not as more rappy, right? Yeah, that, more rappy. Maybe not as good as this song. Yeah. I taste good, but I just had to redirect my cooking. I could have been an opener. I redirect the booking. I read it all the comments saying, D, I'm really shook it. D, you need to see it. That appears as you looking. Yes, the one I got, they really are the best. Now I feel like I can see you bitches is depressed. I am not afraid to finally say shit with my chest. Lost a little weight, but I ain't never lost a tushy. But also, I think... Look, it's hard to know where one's natural instincts are from a distance. But I do think she seems like a person who's incredibly well studied. And at the end of that study, she does seem like someone who has absorbed all the lessons of the last 20 years, coming from all different directions and making music that anticipates the problems of all that stuff and gets out in front of them. And that to me is beyond, it's beyond savvy. Yeah. It's a bait and switch. But underneath it, this is a person who understands how to make pop music better than anybody else who's currently doing it, has studied how to do it, and doesn't necessarily want you to know. But I think on a fundamental level, that's their comfort space. And also knows how to get attention for it. Like going all the way back. Remember like cow say moo, whatever, yes. you know, like Bitch, I'm a cow. Yeah, I'm a cow. Like this Should is we, how we know. Let's, let's go back to I'm a cow. This is how we know who Doja Cat is. So don't forget it. Bitch, I'm a cow. Bitch, I'm a cow. Go move. 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 Yeah. All right. I got one from Cole Cooper, who says it's a John directed question. JC, we're both JC. Uh, yeah, but he exactly. means you. For future reference. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm not sure what your relationship with cannabis is, apart from the fact that you're not a current partaker. For all I know, you two had a stoner face. I'm just wondering if that changes your critical practice in does approaching. He, does Cole work for HR? <laughs> we no longer have drug tests as part of our HR Is that true? onboarding package. I don't, I, I don't know. I was drug tested. I was too. Uh, it was a long time ago. Uh, I'm just wondering if that changes your critical practice in approaching weed albums, quote unquote. I remember hearing you say you didn't get Hold My Liquor, the Kanye and Chief Keef song, uh, until you saw it interact with Space on the Yeezus tour. That's Did interesting. I say that? That's interesting to me because if the Lemon Super Haze sesh is hitting just right, that song feels like a celestial struggle between good and evil. Or is your car what, late night and alone, your mojo dojo casa house? I don't know what any of those proper nouns mean. <laughs> uh, I have not partaken in weed. Period. Period. Yeah. Apart from secondhand. This also presumes, frankly, all weed trips are the same, which I'm sure they're not. Uh, it also presumes that weed trips, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes. All weed trips <laughs> vary. <laughs> you said it. I know. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. Um, <laughs> It also presumes that you have to meet the album exactly where the intent of the author is. but And that gets at your critical practice in general. It gets at, frankly, the practice of criticism. That's what I mean. Not, yeah, not simply my critical practice, but the practice of criticism. I think that the, art, the work of art, where it meets you, that's the point where criticism happens. And that doesn't mean that you go and say, does this do the exact thing that the author, painter, musician thinks it's supposed to do. The things that would allegedly make an album well-suited to that experience, I think will also be more or less evident if you are not high. Right. That's basically what I think. Okay. I mean, I did a whole episode on The Dead. Right. And fit, Mark and Tracy fish. talking about yeah. fish. Yeah. I don't know. I, I, yeah. You maybe I could appreciate that music without weed. Probably not. Probably not. Probably not. But yeah. what that seems like a referendum on the quality of the music. Yeah. Sorry. Speaking of weed albums, we have a question about Damn. an artist that I think would Damn, I'm gonna send this to my therapist. That I think would self identify as a weed artist. What do you think? Yeah. I mean, you know. We're talking to Earl Sweatshirt. When he shows sweatshirt. up, when he shows up, we yeah. can ask him. But I you know. We're talking to Earl no. Sweatshirt. Uh, we got a long question about Earl um, uh, from 
some time ago in the Discord. Yeah. Uh, and it begins, when Doris came out, it was my favorite album for a year plus. Earl has always been a thrilling rap talent for me. I think he's probably the best natural rap writer alive. Uh, this person says they distinguish between rap writers and pure rappers like Gates or Youngboy or even Thug. It's an interesting way to think about it. Mm -hmm. um, I also adored I Don't Like Blank, I Don't Go Outside, especially the song Grief. Mm -hmm. and felt that was a distinct, deeply felt project that articulated his feelings of alienation from everything around him. In the eight plus years since I Don't Like came out, Earl's arc has been very frustrating for me, despite all of the critical and niche fan love he gets. He retreated further and further into minimalism, rapping over simple loops and utilizing boring sounding anti-flows and evading rhyme structure. I'm sure there are people who disagree with me, but I haven't loved a single full project since I Don't Like. In fact, I thought Mavi's 2019 project, Let the Sun Talk, was a better Earl project than anything Earl made. Uh, still standouts from this long era, uh, Rap Beef Remix, uh, Making the Band, Danity Kane, a recent Earl song. Uh, but overall, I feel like Real he's... UK flow on that. Yeah. Uh, and if you uh, read the 50 Rappers Project, you know that Earl said, if you don't have a valid UK flow, right. dusted. Which is why it was top of mind, I think, because he had just put that song yeah. out. Mm -hmm. uh, overall, it feels to me like he has been aggressively avoiding trying to do the stuff he's really, really good at. Unique, brilliant, rhyming writing, storytelling. Do you have any insight on what happened to Earl Sweatshirt, the Earl Sweatshirt I knew and loved? I know he doesn't want to be famous per se, but I'm not asking for a Camila Cabello feature. I just want to return to form. I don't understand what, what he's been up Selena to Gomez this time. Feature. That'd be fire, though. Imagine if Earl was on Good For You instead of Rocky. Better song. Wow. Um, Earl put out an album this last week, sort of. Sort of. With The Alchemist. Yeah. Called uh, Voix Dire which is a French term for jury selection, basically. Um, that's, that's one of the things that voir dire is for. Okay. Um, yeah, yeah, no, that's great. What, is great. It, what does it I, mean I'm in just, French? I, no, I'm just, I'm literally just laughing. I'm just thinking of the paper I did in college on jury nullification. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> we'll save that one for another episode. <laughs> um, I wonder what this questioner thinks of that album, because I think that this is the closest since these are all albums that this person likes. I yeah. mean, I think, I think this yeah. album is like, mm -hmm. it is, it's crisp for an Earl album. It's still minimal. I There's think. one song, Century, featuring Mike. That's on. That's on streaming, streaming and the video. L listen to a little bit of Century. Blood stains on my motherland. Tuck clay, all of his red. Stuck in his jeans and a fabric. In a 23 little strands. Freddie Hubbard sing through the axe. Chop another piece off the branch. Memories careen off the past. Home to a screech in their tracks. Had a couple things on my chest. That's where the demons were sit. I took a seat at the head. It's time to what happened to Earl Sweatshirt? Uh, Earl took the, Earl took the narrative back. That's what happened to Earl Sweatshirt, which he's been doing since day one post Samoa. Yeah, like okay. So I recently, not for this question, but just in general, I recently reread my original Earl Sweatshirt profile from immediately when he came back to Samoa. His first first story he did right when he came back, and I was struck by how the clarity of vision that he has in that story. At that time, we're talking, what are we talking, 10 years ago? Yeah, ten, I think he just did 10 years of Doris, right? Yeah, so 11 years ago, maybe. The clarity of vision there um, is what he's been embracing and returning to consistently throughout his career. He realized already at that point what Tyler wanted and what Tyler was striving for was not what he was striving for. Going back to the odd future days. Yeah, right. And Earl made a lot of what I would describe as refusenic decisions. He made a lot of choices that had a lot more to do with the freedom to say no to things than the obligation to say yes. And I see all of Earl's albums, to me, a mixed bag. I don't love all these albums, and I don't love all these albums within the space of the album. Like, I think that they are hit or miss. I, maybe I even love the earliest stuff the best. But what I'm struck by on these albums is the rigor of the philosophy of how to approach making a rap album. Yeah. 
which is unlike how almost anybody else currently making rap albums is thinking. You can loosely associate it to the Ka Rock Marciano ecosystem. Yeah. You loosely associate it to the Mike ecosystem. And he's found kinship with these guys. Absolutely. Um, so you can loosely, he has these kind of like loose threads. But one thing that I know from having interviewed Earl both back then and also for 50 Rappers recently, nobody knows more about rap music than Earl Sweatshirt. If Earl's not making a style of rap music, whether that you think he should make or that somebody else thinks he's it's making, on purpose. he chose not to make that style of rap music because yep. I promise you he can make that style of rap music. He knows everything about it. He can make that style of rap music. Um, He'd rather drop Godspeed You Black Emperor in a bar yeah. <laughs> just because. Because why not? Yeah. Um, and also one thing that he said in, in the 50 Rappers interview that I thought was really, really telling was he was like, it's boring to rap polysyllabically. Like, this is something, I mean, to be all, like, 90s and 2000s backpack about it. Rapping four syllables in a row, rapping six syllables in a row, whether you're doing it in a company flow way or a Cameron way, whatever it is, this sense that, like, the complexity of the rapping is somehow the most valuable asset that the rapping can have. And Earl basically said directly, I find that boring. I'm well, not it's easy to find it boring when you can do it in your sleep. Of course. Also. But imagine being so far ahead of the class yeah. that this thing that is universally uh, agreed upon as an, uh, a sign of excellence, yeah. you're kind of like, eh. And so all these, so all these albums, frankly, are about how much negative space can I play with yeah. and get away with it and still kind of have something that feels like a rap album. That's what these choices feel like to me. And I understand if you're holding tight to this older idea of what Earl did or could do or should do. I understand that. But like, I feel like he's on a vision quest yeah. uh, of dismantling this thing. And that, even if I don't love every choice that's been made along the way, I'm way more intrigued. I, I'm, I've never been, I've never had an Earl album hit me and I thought, I expected this. Right. That hasn't happened. I've had her albums hit me and say, I'm not sure. Oh, no. The parts that he's removing, maybe I kind of wish some of them were still there. The parts that he's kept, maybe I wish some of them had gone. Like, you know, like you have those feelings, but like that's an entirely different level to engage with a record than just simply it hits or it doesn't hit. You know, uh, and it's okay to be disappointed as a of fan. Course. Like, and I do think. You, you're talking about Earl's, the, Earl's notion of fans. I mean, yes. Doja Cat, yes. right? It's like being an Earl fan, you should be a fan of the experimentation. You should be a fan of the misses. Yeah. Not just the hits. Yeah. I think you can, I think you can both be like, I don't really want to listen to these songs that much, which is one thing. And I wish I could listen to the ones I used to have. But as Jay, Jay once said, you know, buy my old albums. Uh, there's that. And I also think. Yeah, you can you can be grateful that you're getting to witness what is a pretty idiosyncratic and enlightened artistic journey in real time. Uh, and I think because he is so talented, you probably will, if you're invested in Earl the artist and Earl the writer specifically, I think he will eventually win you back because he's trying so many different things. And I do think he stripped so far down that even outside of the complexity of the rhymes, like the writing itself was getting very fragmented. Yeah. Uh, and he wasn't, it, it, it was but hard, again, it's negative. It was hard to follow. But this is also, this is where the negative space yeah. comes in. You know, um, as, as LP once said, even when, even when I say nothing, it's a beautiful use of negative space. Few rappers put that into action. Yeah. Earl Sweatshirt puts that into action. Yeah. And I think it can be confusing. And I'm not saying like, oh, we couldn't possibly fathom like the artwork of Earl Sweatshirt. It's not that. But if you think of rappers who use space and breathing as part of their arsenal, right? We tend to think of it in small, in like a pocket way, in like tiny bits. It's like contrasts to density. But what if instead of density being the dominant mode, what if space was the dominant mode? And I, Sounds like you're on a weed trip, my friend. <laughs> if you say so, daddy. Uh, this is, I think, the last question before we get to songs and snacks. It's from Dave Iverson. Hello there, Popcast. Where is the rock reporting? Uh, is, this, is this Karen's email? Karen, is this your private email address? 
where's the rock reporting on podcast? Repeated reporting on country music? You got it. Endless reporting on Taylor Swift? Definitely. Definitely. Multiple reporting on rap? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. But anything related to rock music, such as Mama, Bully, Pit Pony, Pink Shift, etc.? Radio silence. Why, John, why, and don't you dare throw 21 pilots or imagine Puff the Magic Dragon in there. They are not rock music. Okay, so that's not Karen. Oh, yeah, yeah. Sorry. Yeah. Sorry to say that. Couple answers to this question. Sure. One, uh, most contemporary rock music is not popular. Not that we only cover popular music. Uh, Dave, I hope you listen to the hardcore episode of regular podcast from last, last year. year. Yeah. It's a tremendous amount. You want to come see Tsunami with me? Yeah. Like, let's go. Yeah. Let's, let's get outside. Let's get active. Let's get in the pit. Um, 21 Pilots, pretty good, band. Magic Dragons, pretty bad. Uh, also, Dave, this is this is this might be tough to hear. I listened to some of these bands because I was like, I don't want to, you know, you know me. I'm not trying to be left out. Is this where the action's at? Yeah. I didn't love these bands. I mean, Bully, I've been on for a while. Early Bully was great. Uh, more recent Bully, I don't like as much. I was not, I was not riding with a lot of these bands. They they felt kind of like hard indie of two generations ago. Mm-hmm. It's fine. Mm-hmm. I didn't dislike it. I just didn't feel like this was cutting edge. Um, I don't know, Joe. Do you have? Do you have? Do you have some rock that you'd like to? Share? I've been in a rock state of mind recently. Have you? Uh, I read the lucky you, Dave. I read um, where are your boys tonight? The emo, mainstream emo oral history by Chris Payne. Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I was like, oh, I'll tap in with this. Yeah, it's yeah. funny because it it really bifurcates my youth, like. I was into third wave emo probably the years like 99, 2000, mm-hmm. up until 2004, let's say. Yep. Once Fall Out Boy gets really popular, I never really liked Fall Out Boy that much. I like Take That to Your Grave. Like mm-hmm. I like early Fall Out Boy. Mm-hmm. Um, I wasn't here for the pop crossover moment. I, I wasn't into My Chemical wow. Romance when they came out. Uh, Paramore, I liked. We had some kinship. Yeah. Uh, uh, they recorded their debut in Orlando where I was growing up. So it was interesting to read about this scene that I both really cared about, like saves the day, uh, early taking back Sunday, early brand new, um, you know, say anything like say anything is a good example. Cause like is a real boy I loved and Mm -hmm. was important to me, but I never really listened to in defense of the genre, which Mm -hmm. is like, that's where it takes off with the later, the later say anything. Mm -hmm. Um, so I, I had a great time reading this book been going back listening to a lot a lot of this music and a lot of the stuff i missed uh after after the fact um i recommend the book if you care at all about any Mm -hmm. of the bands i just i really would like to read it named um some really good stuff about pete wentz's early hardcore days and his time in race trader yeah um, yeah, and his like political awakenings uh from pre-fallout boy um this might also be a good opportunity to say if you have any copies of the academic journal race trader I'm trying to get a complete set. I only have a few. Email me. I'd love to buy them off you. Just throwing that out there. Shout out Noel Ignatiev. There you go. Yeah. Um, so that's some rock music. Uh, I feel like it comes up every now and then on podcasts. We like a scene. Usually as a joke. <laughs> usually, as a joke. <laughs> usually as a punchline. We like a scene. We like a moment. We've yeah. talked a little bit about whatever the attempted rock revival is in downtown New York right now, which is maybe partly electronic as well. But, yeah. you know, hyper pop. Uh, the emofication of rap was big for us. We will have an Olivia Rodrigo episode coming up in which Karen Gans will absolutely contend that contemporary pop rock exists in the music of Olivia Rodrigo. Yes. That will happen. Yes. Yeah. Um, the Armed. I don't get the sense that um, that's what this no. writer is asking. No, no, about, no. But that's what we got. Maybe we'll talk about The Armed at some point. Maybe. Intr- I Last mean, album, good. Have, new album I like too. Yeah. Last album I like more. Uh, yeah. We just ran a story by our colleague Mike yeah, Isaac. Mike. Check out feature on the armed. Mm-hmm. The New York Times covering rock music. That's what I'll say. There's yeah. There's plenty of places. We, they we they and we, we and they yeah yeah. There's plenty of places to to hear about rock music. And why don't I just go ahead and play a little rock music on podcast right now? You're gonna you're gonna deliver. Yeah. This is I'm gonna podcast. Deliver bespoke yeah rock and roll podcast um this is a song by a band called rat boys 
Uh, it's Not from there. Not to be confused with Rat Boy. No, different different act. Um, this is a Chicago indie band signed to Top Shelf Records. Great. Um, this is their fifth album. It's called The Window, uh, produced by Chris Walla, formerly of Death Cab for Cutie. Oh, wow. Uh, Great. And the, yeah, the opening song is called uh, Making Noise for the Ones You Love. Could have been 2004. I played this album for myself over the weekend. Uh, Big weekend. A couple times. Yeah. Uh, you know, it's it's press play. It's, f- it's fuzzy, just how I like it. A female vocal buried, like, kind of deep in the mix mm-hmm. comes in, you know, very melodic. I was like, okay, I, c- I can get comfortable here. Mm-hmm. Um, I enjoyed the album. Uh, don't know a ton about this band, but I'm going to keep listening to it. And maybe you will, too. Uh, if you're looking for rock recommendations from us. Thanks, Dave. What do you got, John? You got some rock music for us? I do. This is this is unplanned. Uh, Zach Bryan. New Zach Bryan. Rock and roll? The show's pretty some rock and roll. The show's 100% rock and roll. Uh, this album, so this new Zach Bryan album, you know, announced like 10 days before. It's self-titled. Um, it's coming for the top of the charts. It is, there is a collaboration with Casey Musgraves on this record. It's blowing up. It's called I Remember Everything. Uh, if I'm going to be honest, not my favorite song on this record. But a runaway a hit runaway already. Hit, number one at the Spotify chart. Like, it's a big, big hit. Yep. Uh, untapped demand for Casey Musgraves, who hasn't put out music in a I think you were going to say for Zach Bryan. No, no, no. Well, I'm saying, but I think that's amplified. Yeah. Um, Zach Bryan had a pretty unstoppable 12 months, 16 months right now. Uh, he's just finishing up a tour, just announced another tour. This album is self-titled. There are some moments on this album that I think are very, very good. It's it's a little bit more up and down for me as an album. Um, there's a couple like very self conscious Springsteen moments on this record. Um, I was going to pick Tourniquet as my song, but all I'm going to say about Tourniquet is rhyming tourniquet with turn and quit that's a bar salute for that uh instead the song i picked is called ticking now one of the interesting side dynamics of zach bryan is he had this like very public relationship uh which he was in when i profiled him last year uh and which has ended i don't remember the specifics of the timing but it has ended um and Ticking is a song about letting someone go and a song about how essentially when you are devoting your life to a pursuit, a creative pursuit, you're on the road, et cetera. It's a classic country motif. Uh, when you're devoting your life to the road, being tied down is a, a challenge. Um, this is, I thought, some of the most beautiful songwriting on this record, uh, some of the most beautiful singing on this record. And Zach Bryan for all his gifts, is not often what I would describe as a beautiful singer. I think he's a- His beautiful songs. Beautiful songs and a very convincing singer, a scarred singer. But I don't know that beauty is a thing that he's always striving for in the conventional sense. This, to me, is a beautifully written, beautifully sung song about an absolutely devastating loss. Um, And in listening to this full album, it's, it, it sort of hits near the middle of the record. I don't know if the album is literally doing this and then back up. I don't know if that's exactly what's happening, but it did feel like a gut punch, and I felt like I was recovering from it for a few songs after that. So this is Ticking, Zach Bryan. I'm cutting ties with things that bind my heart to this world. I love you and I'm willing, but I cannot keep you, girl. Philly by the morning and Ohio by the night Think about a long rope is you can't hold on too tight So we can't end on that note. Dog, my entire 20s ended on that note <laughs> and revisited it constantly. Yikes. Yeah, uh, I think story. we need a little pick-me-up. Sugar rush? A little bit of sugar. 
You feel a the rush? Lot of sugar. Feel the rush? Yeah. Addicted to the touch? Yeah. Okay. We talked about the Oliver Anthony discourse, and one thing that came up, which is maybe the least essential part of the discourse, but something that speaks to us. To devote an entire couplet or quatrain to fudge rounds and welfare cases. Did you know what fudge rounds were? I have to be honest and say I didn't. And yeah. We are as snack food aficionados. Yeah. But you got the idea. Of course I got the right. idea. I have never had a fudge round. Yeah. That's mentioned the song. Yeah. I little Debbie snacks were not um I don't know if they were not proximate to where I grew up. We were talking before we were recording to Sawyer and Jamie. Jamie had them in Connecticut. Sawyer had them in Kentucky. Like I definitely had them in Florida. Maybe just like my zip code in Brooklyn just did not have them. I was definitely Hostess gang. I think you were overlooking the little Debbie at the we, at the bodega. Look, if you got Twinkies right there, yeah. Also, Entenmann's. Like, why? Like, we're talking about like no, a New all York same family. No, no. Of course, yeah. I'm saying like you know some regional pride with the Entenmann's. Like, maybe I just maybe this was just not what was hitting to yes. me visually. I do think a lot of people spent the last couple of weeks wondering what exactly a fudge round is. Well, uh, I hit Instacart last night. Shout out not man. sponsored. Not spot. This not spawn. Instacart not spawn. This is just this is journalism. Yeah, we're just doing journalism. Yeah, uh, to get some fudge rounds, and I realized like let's. I don't know any of these products, so let's just get a bunch and see what the vibe is. So we have a flight, a flight of little, little Debbie snacks. Um, and so we got fudge rounds, we got powdered donuts, we got donut sticks. And we got zebra cake rolls. Right. See, I'm used to the zebra cake in the hexagonal form. Hexagonal, but cool. <laughs> hexagonal nice. form. Sure. Nice. All right, math club. I'm sorry. <laughs> I don't even know if that's how many sides the I, zebra I has, but like the, you know, the, the flatter one. <laughs> <laughs> you throw a picture up there, put the number. You can like do like a mat, like one of those like count graphic. the sides. Yeah, exactly. Look, I'm curious. I want to know what these things we we do snacks every week here. Yep. So if if popular music discourse intersects as viciously with snack discourse yep. as it has in the last couple of weeks, uh, this is something we got to do. Okay. Fudge rounds. All right. So this is basically an oatmeal pie. In look. what is the flavor of the filling? It's fudge. It's fudge filling. It looks like it's fudge on fudge. On a chocolate cookie. Mm. To be fair, you said before we started recording this segment, I already know what this tastes like. This tastes exactly like I know what it tastes like. Yeah. I know what this tastes like. This is not a good snack. It tastes like styrofoam, but you're smelling somebody else eating a chocolate bar. I really... <laughs> I'm going five on that. Yeah, four. Okay. Number two. Powdered donuts. Can't go wrong. Can't screw this up. Uh, I tried to get the chocolate-covered donuts. They were out. Mm. It's perfect. It's light. Mm. Powdered sugar, really, really like bright, like really bright sugar. Not like overly saccharine. These are spot on, but again, like unscrew upable. It's like a seven That's and not a half. true. I've had bad powdered donuts. Oh. You go to like, yeah, yeah, yeah. This I've is had. just like a Dunkin' You go to like Munchkin. the wrong 7 You go to the wrong 7 Eleven. <laughs> yeah, some 7 Elevens just don't have their bakery in order. <laughs> I'm going to go seven on this. Okay. I, I, yeah, I, I gave it a seven and a half. It's fine. Sorry, I need a palate cleanse. <laughs> yeah, a little bit of water. <laughs> it's a donut stick. Donut stick. It's just a glazed donut in stick form. I, it, so also, I, this is not what I would call a stick. A bar? Yeah, I would call it a bar. Donut bar. <laughs> Take that under advisement. Hmm. <laughs> Just hearing you do, <laughs> <laughs> literally, just that like tiny bit of like, like like super enjoyment. Yeah, that was that was pure. Glaze is good. It's too thick. The stick is too thick. It should be a stick, not a bar. Uh huh. Um, it should be like it's a good snack though. You know what it should be like? You remember the original Burger King chicken fries? <laughs> yes. It should be like that. That's the right size for this. Maybe a tiny bit bigger. I'm going to go seven and a half on that. Yeah, sure. I, I enjoyed it. The glaze is right. It's not as good as a crispy clean cream glaze. Obviously. Obviously. But like solid, no complaints, would, would have again. All right. Grand finale. 
Okay, so zebra, zebra, so zebra cake cakes, roll. then there's zebra cake rolls. And according to the back of this package, much like a reveal in like a Marvel comic in the 80s, there are zebra donuts. New character unlocked. Here's the thing. <laughs> These are all the same. This is like one. <laughs> this is one snack, to be fair. Yeah. I mean, this is, is there any this cream is beautiful. This? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. oh, oh. This is beautiful. Oh. Mm. Really light. <laughs> yeah, really light. <laughs> <laughs> this is delicious. This is a perfect snack. Too light. No way. Um, this is a 10 out of 10. No. This is transporting me back to the unhealthiest lunchrooms in America. <laughs> this is what Oliver Anthony is singing about. This man's lunchroom had packaged Little Debbie's. He individually packaged. Like, you could buy, like, oh, yeah. And then also... We had a hot wing station just buy That's fine. some wings. And then you could also buy Papa John's pizza by the slice. This is real. This is factual. First of all, you can get Papa John's by the slice at the Papa John's near my house. I don't recommend it. <laughs> Not at 11 years old. <laughs> this is what I'm saying. Number one, I don't recommend getting Papa John's by the slice. I don't recommend getting Papa John's. It's not as good a product as Domino's. Certainly not contemporary Domino's. Number three, none of it should be in a school lunchroom. Michelle Obama, Oliver Anthony, <laughs> shaking hands <laughs> meme. <laughs> um, I, I don't like the slickness of the coating. I mean, it definitely coats the mouth. Yeah. I, this is a... Uh, I love it. A this 10. is a six to me. So it's a 10. It's a perfect snack. If you could drill out, you know how like when you get a bagel and they're like <laughs> scooping the bagel, right? If you can scoop the center of this, <laughs> that's a 10. That's where I'm at. <laughs> you want a donut stick? Can I get that scooped, please? <laughs> that's our show. A paramedic is on deck <laughs> to address this. Oof. Um, Oof, my head hurts. Listen to every podcast ever. NYTimes.com slash podcast. Watch every episode of Podcast Deluxe on YouTube. TinyURL.com slash podcast deluxe. Take you right to the page. Email us, podcastnytimes.com. Get in the Discord of the Facebook group, which I mentioned earlier, tinyurl.com slash podcast Facebook slash podcast Discord. Get the t-shirts and the stickers. It's the podcast.myshopify.com. Our senior producer is Sawyer Roque. Our editor is Jamie Heffitz. We're in a big shirt today which I'm trying to help. Always. Always, but we're going to build out the catalog. Um, Karen Gans, thank you so much. Pedro Rosado, thank you so much. We'll be back next week.